All right, hello, 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 everybody. So um, in this one, we're going to be showing off a little library I built called adjust.h. It's a single header library that allows you to adjust variables while your game is running. It's built off of the previous video. So for those of you that didn't see it, I'm going to show what we did in the previous video, and then I'm going to show what we did to fix some of the problems, basically. So in the previous video, we took the Raylib bou Raylib's bouncing ball, which is just this. Pretty cool. And then what we talked about was the fact that when you're actually programming video games, a common like thing that you want to do is be able to change things. So like while I'm playing it, I could say this ball's radius is great, but I wish it was a little bit bigger. So in adjust.h, I can actually do it. I can also say, for example, make the gravity negative if I really wanted to, right? And then I could say, that's crazy, I hate that. And then we could adjust it. So now it's going to be different, right? And that's the basic idea. And this is in contrast to the original workflow, where instead of doing that, you'd have to exit. Let's say I wanted this and I wanted this. Then I'd have to remake. And then I'm back in business. And you can kind of see like the difference in the iteration time, which is always a huge thing in video games, where you want to be able to iterate and iterate and iterate as fast as you can to try and figure out how to make things just this little bit better. And those things add up while you're developing. So that's the basic idea of why adjust.h is cool. Here's a fun little bug in the simulation. Let me make it small and then it's going to fix itself. So that's the basic idea of what we're trying to fix. So let me get this over here and we're going to go into adjust.h. So adjust.h, just in case anybody's curious, is available on GitHub. It's a very simple thing. You just take adjust.h, you put it into your project, and then you can just use it wherever you want. If you want to see how to use it, there's a bunch of examples. And we're actually going to be going through these examples right now. So to start, we're going to look at, for example, main variables. Because main variables is actually something we couldn't do in the previous example. Because in this right here, if we did this over here, what would happen, oh, that looks bad. What would happen, instead of it actually updating when we saved, it wouldn't do anything at all. It would only update once. Now, the reason why that is, is if you actually go into the code, you can see how we have this macro, and then this macro goes to this function where it passes over the lines, file and line. Now, what it does is it uses file and line to read the file, the actual source code, and find the value based on the line number. And so this is cool, kind of, but there's problems with it specifically, which is that in that example with the bouncing ball, we're running at 60 frames per second, meaning we're reading a file 60 times per second. And once you get to a game of any actual, like, actual size, that's just going to be way too inefficient, and it's just not going to work especially when you also take into account, right, right here, if we have this in the correct location where it will actually work, oops, right, so this is where it will actually work, and you can see what's actually happening is it's actually reading from the same file twice. So we're reading, if there were three variables, then we'd be reading the same file three times, so 180 times per second in this case it's 120 times per second so it's just inefficient and it's not going to work at any actual scale so that's what we're trying to fix with adjust.h and i'm going to start with main variables and you can also see in the previous example over here we only supported floats in adjust.h we're going to support more specifically we're supporting booleans cares floats ints and strings so let's look at the integer example. And the basic way this works is actually, you can see it right here, where we can set things within a certain amount of time. So I'm gonna run it, because I'll actually re rebuild it just so we're clear. So let me do make clear, or is it make clean? Make clean. And then it's gonna be make type bool. Nope, make type int, sorry. And then we don't want the dot there. Okay, so now we're running, and you can actually see there's some things that just aren't being used. There's something for globals, which we haven't talked about yet, and there's also a not actually implemented yet, a just update file. 
which will basically allow for people who want to be more specific to say only adjust, adjust things that are related to this particular file. Okay, so let's go into this right here and we'll do clear and we'll do make. No, we don't need to do that. We already did it. Build type int. So we'll change it. So this will be R1, R2, save it. And now you can see it just worked where we have zero, zero. And then after this was over, it had updated to one, two. And you can see there's no additional actual calls to like this kind of thing. And we'll show what this is in just a second. But all we had to do is we had to call adjust update. Now the way adjust update work actually depends on these. So if we go into this right here, you can see one of the things that I'm not super stoked about in the design actually, where we're, we have adjust const and adjust var, where basically you get to define whether it's gonna be a const or a var. And when we're not in production mode, the way adjust is able to work is by just basically saying this isn't a const, which makes it so when you run into production mode, you could run into some basically bugs where it's saying you're trying to modify things that shouldn't be modified. So it's not like the bug is that terrible, but it's not necessarily a developer workflow that I love. To show how that works on the developer when it's production is you basically have there where now all of a sudden we're getting const instead of var, which is over here. Right, so this is that. And then that takes us to, actually I wanted to talk about one more thing in there. So we define the variable and then we register it using a reference. And what we do is we register it to a file. And then we do an assorted insertion so that way we're able to read the file only once when we get to the next part. Nope, I wanted that. When we get to adjust update. Just update is just a big, big, big um, file. There's a limit where if you have a line that's more than 256 characters, it could break. I haven't actually tested it, but it would be worth looking into. But basically what it does is it reads through every single file that you've registered and it's just gonna make it work which is kind of nice where it's just going to fill in everything and then it has to do some special things to account for different types of um, variables, which was a little bit of a headache to figure out, but then we're reading it, we're scanning it, we're getting it and we're just continuing. So that's basically how we can do mains. So that solves the first part again, where over here we couldn't, where is it? Over here we couldn't do it, but now what we could do is we could do, for example, adjust const float, right? And it would be ball radius 10.11. And with adjust.h, this would work. We wouldn't need this. And then we could do adjust update like this, but we could also even be cleverer. So that's what I think cleverer is, a, I'm not sure. But then we could do is key pressed, right? Key r for example, and then we could do adjust update. And then it would only update when we wanted it to update. And we wouldn't have that really inefficiency thing of it reading a file 60 frames per second. But we also wouldn't have the problem from before where it had to reread the file every single time for a variable. Right, so that's basically how we do main variables. But we can also do more with adjust.h. We can, for example, do global variables, which we also couldn't do before. So for this, let's look at strings. So we have the strings, and you can see basically we even support quotations and escape sequences, which was a real pain to figure out. Not pain to figure out, just a pain to type, because there's a lot of different escape sequences. But the way it works is you can see we have adjust global string, global string, and then we can basically just um, register it after this, and then it's good to go. So I'm gonna go into dot, dot, global variables, right? And I'm gonna do make global string. Now it's working, so I'm gonna do build global string. Let me just get rid of some characters. And now we're good. No, we're not. Is it just this? Yeah, okay, so there is a problem with cleanup, which I will figure out at another point in time, probably right after this to be frank, but I just wanna kinda of keep going because 
overall, the cleanup isn't really the important part anyways. So that's basically strings working. You can see we could do, we had he world and good quotations with a tab friends. And then we changed it back to hello world, good quotations friends. So that's strings working in global variables. Just to show Booleans, for example, why not? We can do make clean, make global. And you can also always just make them all if that's what you want to do. Make global bool, right? And we can do build global bool. And yeah. We'll just make it one. And you can also see I'm showing you can do um, adjust const bools inside of it too. And so this is showing basically that the sorted insert, insert is working. So just to show that, let me do this again. False, and let's see what happens. So now you can see after zero, one, zero, because this is false and this is false, but in the actual source code, right, when we registered it, it was false when we actually compiled it. So that's why that's doing that. And you can see that we basically can mix these and the ordering isn't gonna matter because one of the earlier versions had to be registered like this or it just didn't work. But now we don't actually need to do that. You can put it in any order you want and it will figure it out and make it work. And that was important to do because otherwise this next thing wouldn't have actually worked, which are these. So look, let's look at type cares, for example where we basically have this function get care and all it's doing is returning an adjust care. Pretty simple. So let me clear it. Let me go to cd.short variables and then we'll go to make type care. Then what we can do is build type care. And then I'm just gonna return a D now. Shout out one piece. And you can see now it's just working and where this is actually happening doesn't actually matter. So we could, for example, put in something like adjust const care, right? And we'll just name it A, and then we'll do boom, boom. And then we'll put in one more. Right, and then we'll just do um, type of oh, build care. So now I'm just going to change like this to this. Why not? And now you can see this is working as well. So it doesn't actually matter the order because we're doing a sorted insert, and it just makes it so you don't have to worry about where things are in your file in terms of their line numbers. Otherwise, this would just be a real pain to work with. So glad I got that working. And now I just wanna show you one other thing before we wrap up the video. So this is Rayla, this is our bouncing ball example. I'm going to make this smaller because I know there's a problem with um, cleanup. I'm just gonna comment it out for right now. By the time you're seeing this, hopefully I'll have fixed cleanup. But for now, let's just say we don't even care about cleanup because we kind of don't, to be frank. And let's go into Raylib. Example, so I have this readme, which basically explains how to work with it. So let's just follow it. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller now. So CD build, we're just gonna copy it and hope it works. Because otherwise, that would suck. So we have our bouncing ball. We're in here, and now let's see what we can actually adjust. So I'm gonna get rid of you, and we have a couple things we can adjust. We can adjust the radius, so let's see how this works. Um, this didn't adjust anything. Why didn't it adjust anything? And that is because you can see I have this right here. So all I have to do is press R, and all of a sudden it's updated. If I want to make a couple changes, I can make this two, let's make this one, let's make it even less. And if I make it like this, and now you can see the ball's a little bit floatier and a little bit crazier. If I wanna make it more pronounced, I can make it like this, and then I can go to here. And now you can see we get that behavior. I accidentally closed it, oops. 
Um, let's rerun that. And now we're back here. The other thing that I did was I changed it so you could actually change the directions. So if, for example, I have this press space to pause the ball, but what if I just wanted this to be lowercase? So I could do like this, and then I could do this, and nothing's happened yet, but I go to here again, and all of a sudden I'm adjusting, adjusting strings live while the game's going. I'm not reading the file 60 times per second. I'm not reading it 120 times or 180 times per second. I'm only reading it when I call this adjust update. And that's adjust.h. It's a pretty simple library, to be honest with you, with just a lot of stuff to make it actually work. Because there's just a lot of little things to be able to like make all of this work without you actually having to do anything on your end besides just change the way you're declaring some constants or some variables. Overall, I think it's pretty cool. I'm definitely gonna be using it in my game. There's things that I definitely wanna change and improve that I'll be making videos about, I believe. Like for example, um, where is it? This one, store file modification times, and then it will only reread when absolutely necessary. So basically saying, if the file hasn't modified and you call adjust.update or adjust update, nothing should actually happen regardless. You should just check the file, see that the file has been modified, and then just don't do anything. Another example is I wanna basically have a function where instead of actually adjusting the, um, where basically you could, for example, use an example with like dear I'm GUI, for those that don't know, let me just pull it up. So imagine we had these, like we could pull up an editor right here like this. And then we could adjust things in this editor. And then what would happen is we wouldn't even have to go to our source code. After this, we had made a change, we could call adjust update or adjust save, maybe, probably adjust save. And then it would actually go into our source file and change it. So for example, imagine like we opened up an editor, we changed this to be lowercase, and then we went back into our code, and this would just be updated right here. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about in terms of making this just more friendly and more usable and more useful to everybody. But that's something to do in the future. It's not something I'm really ready to do just yet because there's some other tiny changes I wanna make. It's one of those being fixed cleanup because that was obnoxious to see, frankly, but I'm glad I saw it. But um, yeah, so that's the adjust.h library. There's gonna be a link in the live, link to the GitHub below. I'm sure there are areas for improvement and if anybody has any notes and they wanna make a pull request by all means or if you wanna just leave a comment down below and tell me why I've done a bad job or whatever, totally cool, I'd love to hear your feedback. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll be going to do, I'm gonna do some SDL stuff and then I'll also start the Snake series pretty soon, so yeah. It should, be, it should be interesting. I'll definitely be posting more regularly. But um, yeah, I hope everybody's good. Hope everybody's healthy. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.